Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Calder Mechanics series again and we're going to be doing problems 12 and 13 from the handout. Of course, it's still in the static section. And we're going to be looking at continuous objects, um, basically just ropes in these two problems. And that's why I picked uh, just two this time. Sorry that we're not going so fast, but I'll try to speed it up in maybe the next few episodes. And so these involve ropes, but specifically ropes with mass. And generally when you have uh, some problem, let's say it's just like a problem about a pulley, then you're going to say, oh, massless pulley, massless ropes, and then blocks or whatever, right? But in this case, we're going to be considering ropes that do indeed have mass. And with mass, there come some things that you have to consider because obviously there's mass. Because if... So let's read the problem. Problem number 12. A rope with mass m is hung from the ceiling by its bo by both of its ends and a weight with mass m is attached to its center. The tension to the rope at its either end forms angle alpha with the ceiling. What is the angle beta between the tangents to the rope at the weight? So basically, um, as you can already see in the picture, the rope it has this curvature to it. And if it was just a massless rope, it would just be straight. There would, there would be no other reason for the rope to curve. But instead, because it is actually it does have mass, this causes a curve. And well, one thing I'll analyze in the next problem is considering small pieces of the rope and looking at some forces on on the sides. This is a common strategy for many of these problems. But in fact, there's an even even easier method for this one. That's actually pretty a pretty classical method when you're just dealing with forces. So let's consider first. Um, and that idea is to consider parts of the object. So let's consider first just this dot here. So if we consider that dot here, um, since so it's just a dot, so all the forces have to cancel on it because it's uh, it has zero mass. But so the forces at this junction here, there's the two tensions of equal magnitude by symmetry, and then there's the tension from the block and string here, which is obviously going to have magnitude mg since everything is static. And with that, that means by symmetry, the vertical components of these tensions are mg over 2 and mg over 2. And the horizontal tension, well, we'll find that later. So that's one piece we can consider. And the other piece we can consider is, well, sort of the entire thing. But so let's look at the entire thing and then I'm not going to draw the mass and stuff, but so the tension is going to act. So the tension always acts parallel to the rope at where it's at in a flexible rope because that's how it works. Um, well, and because there just can't be any shear forces is the reason. But so if we look at the two tension forces on the ends here, by symmetry, the ver we can actually find the vertical components of both of these tensions. By symmetry, there are going to be m plus mg over 2. And that's because I've, all it's holding up here is a mass of um, is a mass of m, which is a rope, and a mass of big M, which is the block. And it has to ha hold up all of that against gravity, and the only other vertical forces is, of course, of gravity. So these vertical tension forces are going to be m plus mg, over 2 and similarly for here I'm just gonna mark it as equal like that and so now we know that and from here we can actually find alpha well actually we can find alpha if we let this horizontal tension be t sub x and now let's um, notice here is the horizontal tension here must be the same and that's because if you consider forces on any piece of the rope we can actually consider just half the rope in here if we consider half the rope, let me draw that in a different color. If we consider half the rope here, then just considering horizontal forces, there's only two from the two tensions, T sub x, T sub x, and of course that means they have to be equal. So so this is also T sub x here. And so and this angle here is not actually alpha, but um the angle alpha is, wait, sorry, that is alpha. So this angle here is alpha. And this angle here 
is going to be, well this is beta over 2 here, this is beta over 2, and that means this angle here is going to be 90 minus beta over 2. And well, in other words, this is beta over 2. But, oh sorry, not but, but, so let's get into actually solving for these. So first we can say that, say here, that tangent alpha, directly from here, tangent alpha is equal to m plus m g over 2 divided by t sub x. And we can say here, tangent beta, tangent beta is in fact equal to, sorry, tangent beta over 2, tangent beta over 2 is equal to t sub x over mg over 2. And let's instead write cotangent alpha because that's what seems to match up with beta better. So cotangent alpha is equal to t sub x over m plus mg over 2. And look at that. We can get from here to here based on known quantities of m and little um, big m and little m. So we have tangent beta over 2 is equal to cotangent alpha, which is this value here, multiplied by something to get it to this value. And that value is precisely just going to be m plus little m over big m, right? Since that will cancel this and instead put what we require in. So then now we just take the arc tangent of both sides and we have beta and we're going to multiply by 2 is 2 arc tan m plus little m over m cotangent alpha. And that's it for this problem. And you see, um, there wasn't any actual real hard math here. It was just carefully considering portions of the actual body in question. So we're going to be continued, we're going to do that in problem 13 as well, as well as consider infinitesimals. Let's move on to problem number 13. A boy is dragging a rope with length L equals 50 meters along a horizontal ground with coefficient of friction mu equals 0 0.6, holding an end of the rope at height h equals 1 meter from the ground. What is the length L of the part of the rope not touching the ground? So first thing I would uh, first thing to notice here is the 1 meter here and the 50 meter here. The length is much longer than the actual height it is held up, which means it will actually not look like what in the drawing I've prepared, but it will look a lot flatter. But this is exaggerated, so I can kind of just say what's going on here. Basically, there's going to be a portion of flat rope and then a portion of rope that's above the ground, curved like this. And it's going to smoothly go up here from flat to curved. And with this portion, we can kind of just consider it as like a block and consider forces on it, which will help us in a bit. And when they're saying dragging, we're supposed to assume constant velocity, so it essentially just becomes a statics problem once again. So, with the 1 meter and 50 meter, this should be pretty intuitive. This end will actually not be this um, fat, but in fact, it will just be it will just be a lot more flat. So something like that, I guess. Well, actually even flatter, but 50 meters is a lot larger than 1 meter. And that's still probably a little too high, but we'll live with it. And basically one of the key ideas we're going to use here is that is that the center of mass of this hanging portion of rope is going to be approximately a half the distance from where it lifts off to over here. And so that idea can kind of be seen with infinitesimals and well you don't really need it but I think it's pretty useful so to consider for future problems if you want to do other problems like this. So here we have a small portion of the rope and there's some tension on this side and there's some tension on this side. So we have that the horizontal component of the tension is going to be the same everywhere. And this vertical component of tension goes from zero here to the mass, um, to the weight of this rope that is holding up. 
go somewhere in the middle, it's just going to be some constant t sub x, t sub x, and it's a value here. And if you look at this angle here, which is the um, angle between t sub x and this here, um, and the actual tension in the rope, is quite small. And you can see that by, since it's not lift, lifted up very high, the overall angle is not going to be very high. And so that means for each little piece of the mass dm, dm, which is in fact equal to lambda dl, but that's not that important, each uh, fraction of the mass dm, the amount that it traverses is dl cosine theta, where, theta, uh, where cosine theta is equal to um, t sub x over t. And t sub x is going to be approximately t because of the small angle approximation. And that means dm is approximately linearly related to t sub x. Sorry, um, not t sub x, but x is linearly related. So then, according to, so then taking the average over that, it's just going to be right in the middle here. So this is the center of mass. Maybe I should do that in a different color. The center of mass is going to be here. So now with that idea here, we can go back to considering pieces of the rope. And by considering pieces of the rope, we can just do what we did in the previous problem. So here we're going to consider the piece of the rope that's hanging upwards. And this time we're going to consider force, uh, torques on it. So well, let's first draw on the forces. There's a force tension here, T, with magnitude with T sub x here, and vertical component equal to the only other vertical force here, which is gravity with magnitude lambda Lg, where lambda is the linear mass density. And so that's lambda Lg as well, where L is the length of the rope that is hanging. And there's one more force here that's also T sub x here. Um, t sub x here, and we'll use that to determine what t sub x is, but first we're just going to balance torques about this point here. I should start using different colors about this point here. And so we established that this was halfway, and we also established that since this is rising very slowly, this theta is going to be very small. So that means that the length of the rope is approximately the horizontal distance it goes. And so this distance between here and here is approximately L over two. And the distance between here and here, the point of contact of here is approximately L. So now we can just write down our classic force and torque equation, oh, sorry, our classic torque equations. We have, and of course, sorry, one more thing. This is H as given in the problem. So then the tension going around this direction, this direction, is equal to T sub x H plus lambda Lg lambda Lg times L over two. And we're gonna have to set that equal to the torque going the other direction, which is from lambda Lg at L which is equal to lambda L squared G. And this gives us T sub X H. We'll add in a two there and multiply the two out it is equal to lambda L squared G. So from here, we now need to determine T sub X. And to determine T sub X, we're going to consider this portion of the mass on the left. And this portion of the mass on the left has two forces horizontally, the horizontal uh, friction and the horizontal component of tension from this side here. So the length of the rope here is L minus L. And so then the co the frictional force F sub F is equal to Mg mu, which is equal to L minus L lambda G mu. And this is in fact just equal to T sub X. So if we plug that in here, we get 2 LH lambda g mu, and that is pretty long, um, well anyways, and then minus 2 L H lambda g mu is equal to 
lambda L squared G. So we can cross out lambda G everywhere. And we're just going to be left with a quadratic here, which we can write out as L squared plus 2L. Actually, let's write the coefficient first. 2 mu HL minus 2 mu H big L equals 0. And by quadratic formula, that gives us L is equal to minus 2 mu H plus or minus, um, but we're going to regard the minus in a bit here, is equal to 4 mu squared H squared plus 8 mu HL all over 2, which is equal to minus mu H plus, since minus gives us a negative number, is equal to mu squared h squared plus 8, sorry, not plus 8, plus 2 mu h l. And we can actually disregard the h squared here. Well, this is just as valid of an answer, but this is something generally we do, is minus mu h plus the square root of 2 mu h l. And that's our answer. That's our final answer. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. And uh, please subscribe.